All right. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining me. If you're watching the replay, you can leave a comment in the uh, in the comment box below to uh, ask any questions or interact with this. But I just want to say hi to everyone who's watching this live. And I put out a post the other day on my community tab asking you if you are going to redo your kitchen, how important is it for you uh, to think about the current trends uh, in the world today, the 2020 one trends, the trends of 2022 for your kitchen, how important are kitchen trends? And 365 people voted on that post. So I want to say thank you if you voted. And I want to talk about some of the results of that and go through some of the comments because I think they're kind of interesting and we can glean some things. At least I glean some things from your comments when you uh, respond to posts like that because it gives you an idea of what people are thinking in the world. And, and it's, it's just bigger than my own brain because you, I'm only one person. So I really appreciate all of you who comment and voted on that post. If you are going to redo your kitchen, how important are kitchen trends? And if you're watching this uh, for the first time, or if you're only hearing that, think about it, how important are kitchen trends for you if you're going to redo your kitchen? Is it the most important thing? Is it kind of important, but doesn't really matter? Or you know, who cares about kitchen trends? What's the difference? And everyone has a little bit of a different answer. And I was actually a little bit surprised at what the results of the poll was, because I was thinking it would be uh, something a little bit different. But we're going to get jump into that right now. Uh, first of all, if you are watching live, please say hi in the chat and use the chat to ask me questions or just interact to say hi, whatever you want, uh, because that's one of the great things uh, about doing this is just to say hi to folks. And yes, hi, Darlene. Thanks for saying hi already. Uh, I, one of your comments I'm going to use actually uh, tonight. But um, happy Thanksgiving for all of my friends in the United States. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, here in Canada, we had ours a, a few weeks ago. And uh, I remember being in Atlanta one, one Thanksgiving, and it was quite an occasion, um, really, really great occasion. We had, um, what kind of turkey did we have, Aim? Eh? What kind of? Deep fried turkey. <laughs> it, was, it was delicious. So happy Thanksgiving to all you who are watching. Uh, greetings from the UK. Hey, thanks so much for joining. It's always so cool um, to have people just from everywhere uh, tuning in to say hi. So let's talk about trends and uh, keep saying hi. Keep keep joining the chat. I'll, I'll come back to the chat every now and then here and we'll, we'll talk. Um, how important are trends? So that was the title of the post. Some of you have seen it, some of you may have not. The most important thing, 3% of the people who had voted said that trends are the most important thing. And I actually thought maybe they'd be a little bit higher because there's so many people, at least when I put out a video uh, or content related to trends, that tends to be a video that, that m more people watch and more people are interested in. And as you look around, um, you know, in different channels or different places, different blogs or whatever, trends is a really hot topic. And, um, you know, what is current is important to a lot of people. And people want to know what, what is, what's the deal? What's up? What's, what's trendy? What's cool? What's, what should I have in my kitchen? And for a number, number of different reasons. And we're going to talk about some of those reasons uh, as we go. So mo the most important thing, 3%. So that, I was a little bit surprised. I thought more people would be, would be, um, you know, into the trends because I see so many people going and watching those type of videos and interacting with those videos. My my top video on my channel is about trends for 2022 and beyond, and I'll have a link to that in the description below as well when this goes into replay, because we want to kind of know what's what what's hot, what's not, what are what are we people doing? Maybe not because even we want to put it in our own kitchens necessarily because let's face it you like what you like and that's what you're going to put in your kitchen normally people aren't putting in things that they don't like whether it's trendy or not so but people like to know trends because you know we like to be on the on the, the cusp of what's happening and be in the know and also we like to disagree with those trends you know in particular if you're talking about the open shelf or the white kitchen or if blue is the thing you know for cabinets or what whatever the trend may be I find it interesting that uh, that might happen a couple of times. Yeah, if that happens again, I'll just keep doing that. I find it interesting when you, if you uh, you know Google search uh, kitchen trends, and you know you get the blogs that come up, and and I, I 
I read all the blogs too. Um, it's a great source of material for videos to see what people are talking about and what's, what's, what's trending, what's happening. And you'll get a list of like 35 kitchen design trends or the top 40 kitchen design, design trends or 70 kitchen design trends for 2021. I'm thinking that's a, that's a lot of trends uh, to be implementing in, into one kitchen. And, you know, I mean, they're just these popular ideas that people um, are, are interested in. And some of them I agree with are trends. Some of them are, are things that are, are popular and some things are just a little bit off the wall, in my opinion, and a little bit of a reach to, 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 say, to say in that word. Uh, hello from Rosie. Hi, Rosie. We are building a new home and we'll be moving in after Christmas. Awesome. We moved into our new home after Christmas. <laughs> our kitchen cabinets are white. Yes, absolutely. It's what I like. Exactly. And um, so let's just jump into the next one. I forget what I was saying because I got sidetracked with the comments. Amy, if I get sidetracked, just holler out. You were talking about this. Amy's my, uh, my production manager back there. Kind of important. Kitchen trends are kind of important. 48% of the people who voted said kitchen trends are kind of important, which is pretty much to be expected. Most people kind of want to have their kitchen looking nice. Um, kind of when someone comes to see their kitchen, they like for it to be, you know, a little bit in 2021 and not 1985 if they can help it. Most people I know uh, or have done kitchens for, they, they kind of want to keep up to something that looks you know, trendy, even if they don't use that word, uh, because that, that, that's kind of a trigger word for somebody. I don't want anything trendy because trendy is going to be not trendy next week. And I don't want that, but we still want trendy, even though we might use other things to talk about it. And so 48%. So basically half of the people who voted are voting that trends are kind of important. And I would suspect that they would, you know, those, t those people or that type of person, myself even as well, because I kind of think trends are, are important a little bit. Uh, you, you know, you read things, you understand that there's certain looks and certain things that are, are happening and certain things aren't. And, and that's here nor there for most people because you either like it again or you don't. Um, but 48% said, yeah, kind of important. We put in a new kitchen. Um, maybe it's you're trying to pick a color. And one of the comments, I'm going to get into the comments uh, later that, that came in on this particular post, but if you're thinking about future use or who's going to be using that kitchen in the future, or if you're going to be selling that home or, or what's going to be happening, if it's just you and it's your forever home and you're going to retire there and, and there's never going to, you know, no one's ever going to come in there and, and use that kitchen other than you, then you might think a different way than if, hey, I'm going to sell this home in five years or it might not be forever. You might think, uh, in different terms and might decide to pick certain things that are trendy because you want the next person coming in to, to want to purchase that home and, and that the kitchen such a huge part of the home. And for buyers, myself and Amy, when we would buy a home or go look at a house to purchase, uh, you know, the kitchen's a big deal. And, and oftentimes, of course, I would never be satisfied with the kitchen. Uh, no matter how new it was, it could have been done yesterday. And I'd be like, nope, nope, it's got to go. It's all wrong. <laughs> She's laughing in the back because it's true. And uh, so, you know, it, it depends on, on what the use is and, and what the, you know, the return on investment maybe you want on that kitchen. So kind of important. And, and again, it comes down to a lot of trends that do look nice. It's not like they're just trendy to be trendy. Uh, a lot of trends do look nice. White kitchens, for the most part, look nice. Uh, they're bright. Blue islands or blue cabinets, you know, that, that's a big one. People are like, yes or no on that. But blue happens to be the most popular color in the world, apparently, according to Google. If you can trust Google, I don't know if you can. But nonetheless, it's a very popular color and it's very popular in kitchens. So those are things that you can think about. Now, this next one was not important at all. About half of you were, listen, I don't care what the trends are. doesn't matter to me. I, I, I don't, it doesn't matter. I want to put in my kitchen what I want to put in my kitchen and whether it's trendy or not, like it doesn't matter. And I was recently talking to someone and they said, like, they asked me the question about their, their new kitchen. Would, you know, would this be, would, would this be okay? Like is, would this look okay? And I said, well, the real thing is like, it, it looks fine. If you like it, 
and it's what you want to do. It's your kitchen. And if someone says something to you about it, be like, you know, you can, you can get out of my house. Like it's not yours. It's my kitchen. Not like that, but you know what I'm saying? The attitude is I want it to be what I want it to be because it's mine and I like it. And I'm not trying to please my neighbor or someone else um, around me who wants my kitchen to look a particular way. I'm not trying to please my designer who's trying to push maybe certain things on me because that's what, what they like. I want my kitchen to be for me and it doesn't matter what the trends are. And I think that's really important. And if you like some trends and trends are kind of important, then it's, it's, and it doesn't matter what anyone else says. I think it's a good mix. I think, you know, if, if you want to be abreast of what's happening and you want it to look a certain way, then that's fine. But it's not important at all. Half of you said doesn't even matter. I don't care. So if that's you, let me know in these, uh, this live chat because, um, you know, I think it's, it's interesting. I get a lot of, I get a, so much information from listening and, and watching what people comment about. And it's, it's really fun. And it, it helps me. These posts help me to, to kind of figure out these live streams. So let's just skip over to the chat for a minute and uh, I'll say hello to a few people. And then I want to go to, jump into some comments uh, that I received on this. So doo -doo 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 -doo. we got hi from the UK, which is awesome. Hello from Ohio. Hi. Greetings from California. Awesome. Indianapolis. Happy Thanksgiving again to all of you in, in the United States. Just uh, appreciate you being on here. Hi from Texas. Um, is awesome to, uh, to have you on. This is a question from Kitty007. What is your opinion on shaker doors in the kitchen? Traditional square or slightly beveled? Um, very slightly beveled, like a small little radius, um, but shaker squared on the inside profile. And um, that's just because that's what I have. But I like the slight, slight one inch, one eighth inch radius on the outside of the door because um, that's just what I like. And I'm going to tell you why even a chamfered uh, or like a, I use the word chamfered. What's the other word for it? If you just cut it off on a, on a diagonal on the outside edge, the reason is when you are trying to line up doors and adjust doors and drawer fronts that have just a square edge on them, it, it it takes a lot of precision because all of the, the joints like cabinets move, um, you know, they, they, they're used, they're moving. So to line up doors that have all square edges is really difficult. So even having a, a slight uh, chamfer or uh, an one eighth radius on the outside edge of that door, like the door profile will really help you when you're aligning the doors and drawer fronts, especially if you're a type of person that wants everything to be lined up. Now, if you don't care about it, then that doesn't matter. But a lot of people, when they look at their kitchen, they, you know, things are out of alignment and they, it, it kind of frustrates them. I like to have my doors lined up to a particular way. And, you know, especially with these frameless European style hinges, so easy to do that. And having a outside profile that's slightly beveled uh, will help. So I hope that answers. That's, that's my take on it. Uh, Darlene, I'm coming back to you. I got, I got one of your comments here. I will... I will have a big, nice mobile island so I can move if needed. That depends on if you need uh, electrical in your island, if it's code where you live. So you have to be careful of that because uh, where I live, it's code to have electric electrical in your island, have an outlet. And if, um, in that, if that's the case, you normally can't move that. So be careful of that if it's a roll-in island. Now, one of the tricks they used to do they probably still do. And if you come to have your kitchen, you know, your building inspected, they'd leave the island out. Don't tell anyone I, I told you this, by the way. But they'd leave the island out and then they'd, they'd, they'd get their home inspection and then they put the island in and they can move it around. But it's much better to do it the right way and have the island in place when it's inspected and have electrical in there. So check your building codes for that one for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Zoe. Zoe's my daughter, so thanks for joining me, Zoe. She's also my camera girl uh, on occasion, as well as my other children, Eva and Jack. Hey from Georgia. Hi Charlotte. Thanks for saying hi. Um, function functionality uh, is okay. Functionality is trendy. Yes. I totally agree that we should be designing kitchens to be functional. 
first, like number one first. And then, uh, and then after that, we can think about how beautiful they need to be um, in design kitchens around that. But if they're not functional, then no matter who comes in to buy that kitchen, they're, you know, or if just for yourself, if you're living in that home and you do the kitchen over and you want it uh, to look a particular way, but it doesn't, it's not laid out good or it's not laid out properly or to be functional the way you like to use it, then no good. Uh, sup, Dad? Sup, Jack? Nice to see you on my live stream, buddy. All the kids are on my live stream. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just coming in. Okay, here we go. Just come in. Hey, thanks for joining me. Kitchen remodel contractors are saying that molding is out. Yeah, I don't. Yes and no. I, you know, like maybe depends like crown molding that traditional look, I guess, if that's like more people are going for that modern look. Uh, Ikea has done a big part in, you know, turning the trend away from moldings as far as crown or cornice, cornice goes um, around the top of the cabinets and even even uh, moldings underneath for light valances. And when they do have moldings they're just more square and, and and stark more to go with that shaker style cabinet or that flat you know door style very modern um so molding is out i would say it's i would say it's kind of i don't know if it's out but it's it's definitely not as popular um in in the world today or at least in my design experience i don't put crown on a lot but it, it still looks nice i don't think there's anything wrong with crown if you like it you like it Have you heard? Um, Nantucket sings. Eh, can't say I have. I have to get back down that one. A lot of sings in the world. Yes, I don't. Oh, oh. let's go here. Um, around the way, girl next door. I have one of your comments, and I'm going to talk about in a minute too. Thank you, IKEA. Not a fan of molding. Yeah. Well, there you go. Right. IKEA does such a nice job. If you ever been in, into an IKEA showroom, it's like let's just let me live there. It's amazing. Um, so cool. Um, hey, Mark, Brisbane, Australia. Hello. So cool. The world is such a small place. The internet so, so amazing. And it's one of the things I appreciate about doing this. And oh, yeah, I want to go jump right back here real quick. Happy Thanksgiving from Atlanta, Georgia. Like I said before, we spent one Thanksgiving in Atlanta, Georgia, and we had a great, great time there eating that, uh, what was that turkey again? Deep fried turkey. <laughs> so that was a long time ago. All right, let's jump into some of these, um, questions yeah so thanks so much for joining me um and and just to say hi is cool ask a question i'll come back to these in a minute darlene your husband is an electrician well there you go you got it figured out so yeah a mobile island is a great option if that's the case i've done a few mobile islands in the past where you can um you know put them on casters that have locking legs and they're tucked underneath so they're not seen and you can roll them around pretty easily and that's a, a nice option if you have somewhere to put it which a lot of people don't, I guess. They don't have a, a big wall space they can wheel that thing into. But if you do, it's a great option if you if you need it, even if you need it for other functions. And uh, that's a good thing. Let me look at some of these and I'll jump back into the chat in a minute here. Uh, these are some of the comments that I got on the post on the community tab. I just wanted to get a sip of my coffee because uh, we're just chilling. All right. This is SMW, the bar. All right. Like most things, I think this is case by case. Personally, I am planning to be in this home forever. So I don't care where styles are going. I don't care much about the trend. I'm just um, going to do what I want. Some may be, some may be considered trendy and some may be considered very off trend. But since I'm planning to live um, with it forever, it doesn't matter. And um, she goes on, or they go on to say, if someone's planning to move in the next 10 years and they want to get as much ROI as possible, then yeah, I'd say trends would be worth considering at that point. And if you're flipping the house, trends are likely your bread and butter. So very good point. Again, if you're thinking about uh, flipping a house, if you're buying a house to flip it, you're not going to live in there. It's probably important that you watch my, you know, current trend video to figure out what what the latest trends are or uh, any of them out there to see what would look the most for the best for most people. I'm going to say this pretty confidently that a white kitchen is going to be the most appealing to the biggest majority of the population. 
whether or not you like ki white kitchens or not, if you're flipping the house, more people, more consumers are purchasing white kitchens than anything else. So um, I would I would consider that at least if you're flipping a house. Uh, here's another one from uh, Cloudy Angel. Uh, it's important to follow kitchen trends to keep up to date, but you also um, you have to find your own style, not copy and paste someone else's kitchen. And not our trends are worth following because um, they don't suit your personal styling. And that's a really good um, point. It is your kitchen and you have your own particular likes and dislikes. And if you don't like something, then you don't want to have it in your kitchen. No matter what blog or kitchen designer or YouTuber says about it, you have to like it. And I think that's really important. And, you know, most people, that's what they do. That's 48% of the people said, I don't, I don't, doesn't matter to me at all. So, okay. Mavis Jones, here's one from Mavis, and Mavis is a, a, a common commenter on my channel. So hi, Mavis, if you catch this at any time. Um, since I'm only planning on being in the current home uh, for probably another five to eight years, I somewhat care about trends as far as resale value. So again, talking about resale and, and ROI um, for the home I'll be moving into after retirement, I care less about trends. So pretty common sentiment that people, you know, if it's something that you're going to be flipping or turning over to someone or selling, you want to have, um, you want to have some, some ROI there. You want to be able to get a good return on that investment because the kitchen is a very big investment. Be for most people, I know for, for Amy and I, the, the biggest purchase you might make in your entire life. One of them, you know, aside from your home and maybe a car, but even more than a car sometimes. And in fact, most kitchens today are worth more than the first home that I bought. So it is a big chunk of money and you want it to be functional. You want it to look nice. You want it to operate nice, all that stuff combined. So very important. Kitchen trends. Uh, wait, now let's see. Here, here's a good one from Zoltan. Zoltan? Zoltan. If I mispronounce any of these, my apologies. And I'll, uh, I'll check the chats here in a minute. You should be aware of kitchen trends so that you will know what to avoid. There you go, right? Today's trends are tomorrow's outdated kitchens. Maybe not tomorrow, but they will definitely be outdated at some point, maybe. And normally, that's just the way it goes, unless they're white. Because white just never seems to go out of style for some reason. Though I have an upcoming video in January where I talk about the end of white kitchens. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be interesting. So be aware of trends so that you know what to avoid. Well, some people just don't want to be trendy. And and I, I understand that completely. They want to have their own take, their own style. And, and that's important. All right, Darlene, this is your comment um, that you, you, you mentioned that you commented. I think of timeless. Uh, Darlene, this, by the way, um, looks like it would write in, you know, in a blog or a book. It, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful comment. I think of timeless instead of trendy. A kitchen is a beautiful, a kitchen that is beautiful as well as versatile becomes timeless. Functional as well as pleasing to the eye, but mostly it's the people that make the home. I don't know if you could craft a better comment than that, but that is um, a really good take on the idea of something that's trendy and something that's timeless and what's really important. And again, that does come down to uh, a, a lot of factors, which we're talking about how, how functional it is, you know, how the kitchen you make, you make the kitchen your own. It's your kitchen. A lot of stuff happens in the kitchen. A lot of, a lot of community family happens in the kitchen and, and so, you know, the, the trends don't matter for that. Whether you have white cabinets and open shelves and whether you have the latest smart fridge or the latest this or that, none of that matters really. So that's a really good take on it. Let's keep going. Let's switch, in fact, to the comments. I just want to say hi to some people who I see coming down and uh, try to answer some of these. All right. Okay. Just, just of all trades. Hi. Thanks for saying hi. Thanks for dropping in. Um, it's great to have you. And yes, we are deep frying a turkey tomorrow. I just remember them testing the deep fryer to make sure they weren't going to blow the turkey up into the stratosphere. That was kind of fun. Is there a kitchen remodel for very for very small is for very small kitchens? My current winter, my current winter seems like it's nothing but appliances. Is there a kitchen? So very small kitchens can be difficult to design kind of because the thing with a smaller kitchen is you have less choices and i find designing when you have less options is actually easier than designing for a massive massive 
kitchen footprint because you can just do almost anything. And that's not always the best um, when you're from a designing perspective. So I think if it's approached correctly, yeah, you can have a very, you know, nice looking and functional kitchen that's small. Um, but I hear you when you're saying like, it just seems like it's all appliances because appliances take up such a huge amount of area in a kitchen. And it can seem like it's just all you're looking at as appliances. And I guess this is why those integrated appliances can be very popular, especially in smaller kitchens, so that you just don't see all the color of your appliances everywhere. You have more of a, a seamless look in your kitchen. Uh, hey man, what are your thoughts on laminate counters? Well, if you want the truth, I love laminate. It's because it's what I can afford. I don't really know. I've never had a problem with laminate. Um, we take care of ours. There's many, many, many nice laminates out there. Yes, it's not stone and it's nowhere near the quality of stone, but for the price and for what you're going to get out of it and the use you're going to get out of it, I've never, I've never burned my laminate. I've never had a miter joint that got water in it because I'm just really, really particular about that. My family can tell you. Um, so I, I don't have any problem with laminate. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Anyone out there, if you have any thoughts on laminate, I don't think there's anything wrong with laminate countertops at all. What to look for when redoing a small kitchen? Uh, currently, it just seems like, okay, that's what, that's what you're trying to say. You have nothing, but um, you want to get as much counter space as possible in that little um, space. And that can seem like a big task, but that's the goal is to get uh, some good workable space. If you can find 36 inches of work top of workspace, that's what you want to shoot for. It's about time you showed up. Thanks for joining, Rob. I got Rob's hoodie on tonight. 20-minute guitar player. If you're looking to uh, play the guitar, he's the man that you want to go check out. 20-minute guitar player. Molding does look very classy in some kitchens. I personally don't like them because I had to clean them growing up. Yeah, that's like me and wood. I, I don't want to stack any more wood. I did a lot of wood stacking growing up. I'm done uh, stacking wood. All right. What? Here's a good question. Hi, Rowena. What is a timeless hardware for white kitchen cabinets? Hardware is a really good thing to bring up because I think hardware changes so much. Uh, the rollover of what's popular in hardware changes quicker than like the type of cabinets as far as color goes. So for the last decade, brush nickel has been the go-to on white looks really nice. I have it in my kitchen, had it in my last white kitchen, brush nickel seemed to be it. But over time that gets it, that gets boring. And what they started bringing back was this really nice muted brass brushed brass color, which looks really beautiful. It's like a, a, a gold color. That looks really nice on white. It looks really nice on blue. Black is always a good go-to, and there's lots of different matte black colors. I don't know if I would say, like, if I'm talking right now, the brush nickel seems to be the most timeless look on a white cabinet, but that's going to be up to a lot of people. That's a that's a opinions right there. So a lot of people are going to have opinions on that one. Lighting is very important. Bright space is a happy place. Teresa, yes, lighting is super important and something I should have considered a little more in my own kitchen. And, um, you know, so so we're talking here, like a, a lot of these uh, questions, like talking about um, hardware, talking about countertop, talking about, uh, you know, um, lighting. Those aren't trends, really. Those are all, you know, they're all necessities of the kitchen that we use. Now, maybe the color of countertop or maybe the type of countertop or like you said, the color of hardware is important, but like, these are all things that you have to have. And, and this is where it comes down to like, it, if I like it, I like it. And you know, it, if it's going to look nice, you know, I want it to look nice. So what looks nice in a white kitchen, brush nickel looks nice. And that gold color looks nice to me at least. And to a lot of other people, cause that's, if you go into a hardware store where they sell these, uh, you know, all these, all the hardware, 
you see a great big rack of, of a whole lot of brush nickel. And that tells you something. I'm going to get into that in a minute. I've seen some kitchens with a mirror backsplash behind the range, making small space look bigger. Your thoughts? Um, yeah, I've seen that a lot too. I've talked about it in a few different videos. Um, thanks for, for commenting on that. I, I mean, I don't personally, I don't have an issue with it. Um, I, it wouldn't be something I would personally do just because I don't like it, but I don't, again, have an issue with it. It, it does make the space seem bigger. So a mirrored, a mirrored panel behind a range. I would think it would get pretty dirty and greasy and hard to, you know, hard to, you to keep on top of it more than even, you know, wiping up a, a tile, but Hey, Rose, Rose, my laminate, laminate is perfect at 30 years. Just look after it, right? Just look after your laminate. It'll, it'll last you forever. 30 years. I'd love to know what color that was. If it's 30 years old. Um, I bet that's one you can't get anymore. All right, let's go to this one, and then we're going to talk some more comments here. In a small kitchen, I'd imagine you need smaller appliances like apartment size appliances. Yep, that, that would help. Okay, so in North America, we have a 30-inch range. That's a standard. You can get a 24-inch range, um, and that's something that you can install in an apartment, but you could put it in, in a kitchen. You can get smaller dishwashers. So again, in North America, um, 24 inches is a standard dishwasher, but you can get 18. You can actually get other types of dishwashers, one that are pull out drawer styles and one that's in sinks. Like there's all kinds of different things out there. So yeah, that is one definite thing you can do. You can get smaller fridges. Um, so, so all of that are options in a small kitchen. Um, and you know, if that's, if that's the way you have to go, that's the way you have to go. The issue with smaller appliances is normally they cost more money, you know, funnily enough, because they're not, uh, at sole as often. So they tend to be marked up more, um, by the, by the vendors, by the people who are selling them. Hey, this is a great comment. Press the like button people. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Darlene. And, uh, you know, I was going to put this up here. Uh, subscribing is trendy, but that was kind of corny. So I, I decided not to. <laughs> All right. Running baseboards around toe kicks. Running baseboards around toe kicks. Can you ask that in a thoughts on running baseboards around toe kicks? Oh, okay. So like your regular trim around your, around your house and hmm, that's a good question. I've not done it a lot, but it can be, it can be done. Are you talking about like a flush toe kick or are you talking about the, like a recessed toe kick, uh, you know, underneath that three inches or so that the toe kick space is because if it's a flush toe kick, say around an island, or even if it's your kitchen, that could look nice. But underneath the, the, the toe kick of your cabinets, I don't know if it would make that much of a difference and, and whether or not it'd be worth doing. Um, but it, it's a, you can do it as long as it's the, the right height and it fits underneath, obviously. But yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Have, I've, I can't say I've ever done that. Normally, we just go with a, a regular flat toe kick. Um, but I have on occasion put, you know, a colonial style or whatever you want to call it baseboard around an Island. And that's a particular look that, that is out there. And that's what we did. So I guess it could be done and, and just, if it's recessed, I don't know if you'd see it that much. How easy is a mirror to clean? It shows dust really easy. I don't clean a lot. <laughs> Amy, at least he's a mirror to clean. I'm just kidding. I clean sometimes. Do subway tiles look good on backsplash? Yes, they do still look very, very nice. Long gated subway tiles. The square ones are beginning to be trendy these days. So I like, um, I like subway tiles on a backsplash. I'm going to be doing our backsplash soon. Hopefully we'll be able to feature that in a video. I'm trying to pick out the right tile. And that, that can be the problem. And part of that is, you know, again, understanding what's trendy and also being like, well, it's got to be what we like and what, what fits us personally. So that's something we'll be considering in the future. Okay. So James, you're talking about recess. So I'm just jumping back to that baseboard question, recess, toe kicks. Um, yeah. So no, I, I would say, I mean, definitely could, I don't think it would make a huge difference overall. If you had leftover toe kick and you didn't want to uh, spend, 
the money on Tokik, then maybe. I don't think there's a real reason to do it or or really not to do it, other than you're not going to see it that much. All right. Let's... Oh, good question. Herringbone or horizontal? Uh, herringbone is nice. I do like herringbone. And I heard a me too back here from the chair. So I guess it's herringbone it is for us, I guess. So there you go. I think that looks, I think that's trendy, which is better looking long term. Um, they, they've both been around for a long time. Herringbone is not something new. So yeah. But, uh, you know, horizontal laid subway tiles, that, that's timeless as you can get. All right, let's go back to some of these these comments and then uh, we'll chat for a minute. So Kelly Hahn said, function, please. So we're talking about uh, trends. We're talking about, you know, all the latest design trends, all the latest kitchen trends, what's going to be trendy in 2022 and beyond and what's going to be trendy in 2023 and what's going to be tre trendy and whenever and how important are these things. And the most important thing uh, is functionality. Uh, as far as the way I see it, the kitchen has to be functional, has to work well, it has to be laid out properly. And if it's not that, then it can look as nice as it as you want it to look, but it's not going to serve you, you know, very well at all. So other than if it's just a showpiece. And for some people, for some people's kitchens, they are just showpieces and that's fine. Maybe they don't cook a lot or maybe it's, it, it is something that, you know, their lifestyle doesn't need to have a really functional kitchen. And so they have a kitchen that's very just for show and, and that there's, that's awesome. But if you're going to be using it, you want it to be as functional as possible. So give me function over, over fashion, I guess. Maybe that'll be one of my uh, branded t-shirts, function over fashion. Do you like that one, Abe? Function over fashion. I'm trying to come up with some merch. So if you have some great, you know, little one-liners, you can send them to me. I'd love to incorporate those if they're appropriate, but function over fashion. Um, <laughs> You know, I'd say that would be the, the way to go. Give me a second. Function over fashion. And and when I design a kitchen, I'm I'm not concerned about the style. So when I design a kitchen with my program, um, I design the whole kitchen in the generic look that just comes already automated. And I don't change anything until the very end because it doesn't matter until the very end when you have to look at it in 3D that you want it to, to pop. So that's when, you know, having it look a particular way, when a client sees it, you want it to look nice for them and you might consider particular trends, or at least I consider, you know, what, what's kind of trendy. So I do a lot of kitchens in white or I'll add some black or some dark grays or maybe some blues or walnuts, stuff like that, natural tones, things like that, that are trendier right now. And I'll incorporate that into the design layout, but I won't do it until way after the fact after I've designed the whole thing and laid out the kitchen to be as functional as possible. So, huh, okay, I'm going to come to the, those comments in a minute. Trends kind of dictate what's available on the market. So this was a really good uh, around the way girl next door. So this was your comment, trends dictate what's on the market. And I really appreciated this comment because it's very true. If you go into Home Depot or Lowe's or one of those types of stores, and you look around the kitchen department, you look around at what they have there. They have, it's not, it's not random. I, I worked in a similar type of environment for a long time. It's not random what they have and what they're selling. They are, well, thank, thank you for that super chat. That is really, really generous of you. I'll come back to that in one second. So thank you for that. But you go into those stores and you look at, that um, department, you look at what's what's well, on display, the types of kitchens, and they have people in the background, you know, that are working at looking at what's trending. That's a big one. They're looking at what's trending. They're looking at what are people, what are consumers purchasing. They're looking at what's happening at IKEA. They're looking at what's happening in Europe. They're looking at this big show in Milan, in Italy called Eurocachina, which is the biannual kitchen show that happens. Uh, over there and all the latest um, all the latest and greatest in kitchen design is there they're looking at all this stuff and then they're incorporating that into their SKU base into their product lines into what they want you to see because those are the things that are trendy because for them trendy is you know someone purchasing something at the store that's what's trendy money is trendy 
you know, the getting the margin on the product is trendy for these companies. So they're, they, they're not setting trends. They are really looking and finding what is trendy, what people and what consumers are purchasing and putting that in front of your eyes. And so what you end up seeing is a lot of people buying these things because it's really, it's what's available. And because it's available, it can sometimes skew the results to look trendy uh, or look like it is trendy, but it's just because it's so available. But it's not just, it's not random. They are, they're very intentional about the things that they're putting in front of you. So years ago, you would walk into a store like that. You would not see a gray cabinet in stock and you'd probably not even see a gray cabinet in the custom line in the custom showroom. Awesome, Darlene. Thanks for joining me. Ha have a great, um, have a really great Thanksgiving. So now you walk into a store like that and you see gray cabinets for sale just off the shelf. You'll see displays of gray cabinets for custom uh, orders and, you know, why is that? Well, gray was something that's becoming very trendy. So these companies want to put it in front of you and you'll purchase it more. So gray is being purchased more. One of the reasons is because it's available and it's easy and it's right there. And, um, you know, you don't have to, uh, because it's on display, it, you know, it must be trendy. It must be good. It must be what people want because it's on display. And so that's just uh, something to consider when you're looking at uh, some of those some of those showrooms. So that was a really good comment about just hey, it was trendy because it's available and, and that's what's in front of us. So if you are enjoying uh, this, please give it a thumbs up, and I really do appreciate you. And so here, I want to just say a huge thanks to Claudia. Um, really appreciate you. Your channels helped me a lot in my kitchen renovation and made and had made my designer and contractors fear and hate me. <laughs> I'm sorry to those. Although I live abroad and our construction is quite different from us standards, uh, by the way, just installed a three color herringbone backsplash that I'm crazy about. There you go. That sounds awesome. And that's sort of one of the things that we were looking at. Claudia, thanks for that. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for everyone who watches. It's a, it's a real blessing. To have you uh, to have you guys on here so yeah um and uh that's really my goal is to help you and and i'm glad that i'm doing that and i'm glad that you know you, you want to make those designers and contractors out there uh you know sit up pay attention <laughs> not that i know everything i certainly don't claim to i'm learning a lot uh, even as i go but i've been in this for a long time and i've seen a lot of things so what I do know and what I can share, I want to share, and hopefully that helps you. Um, and Rose is saying, spent my day tracking down missing tiles. Oh, that's not good. My backsplash, it will be the same as the bathroom floors. We tried that actually, and we decided against it because, uh, not that it didn't look nice. It just, well, I guess it didn't look nice. It wasn't, wasn't going to work. So let's jump back. Hey, from Poland. Cool. Very nice to have you on. Um, man, this, this is so cool. I just really appreciate people just joining in. So hi. I taught, uh, taught a girl uh, in grade five from Poland. That was kind of cool. Uh, a couple more, just a couple more of these, and we're going to wrap it up. We're, we're coming on a little bit here. So um let me have a sip of coffee, coffee and I just enjoy chatting with you guys. Uh, I enjoy the chats. I hope you, you know, enjoy this. It's cool. Just hanging out. Um, especially, um, Oh, I got to get back to that corner cabinet comment, but it's cool just to hang out and talk a little bit about kitchens. And I, I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, current trends affect what is readily available. We just talked about that. So this is another comment. Other than that, all we care about is the kitchen is that the kitchen works for us. And by the time that, that, uh, we sell that the trends will be different anyway. So again, just the idea that, you know, uh, it, here's what's available. Most people are going to go with what's available. And other than that, like it doesn't really matter. And, and that is, um, you know, so important to people that the kitchen is yours and you love it. And, you know, I can just go on about it forever. I can talk kitchens all night, but I'm not going to, cause, um, you know, be here, we'd be here all night. 
Hello from New Jersey. We just raised our ceilings by nine inches. That is a big undertaking. How did you raise your ceilings by nine inches? Wow. That, that's a huge deal. But now I have the space doing nothing over my cabinets. Can I add some storage? Please help. Thank you. <clears throat> Do you mean you have nine inches of space left over? If you have nine inches of space left over and you're trying to fill that in, it's going to be difficult to come up with something that is um, accessible, one, uh, and really functional. One, because of the height and with a nine inch cabinet, you have to take into consideration the actual box of the cabinet. So if you have more than that, so if your cabinets are installed at 84 inches, which is pretty normal or even 90 inches, and you have, you know, six inches and then another nine inches. So if you have space, if you have at least 12 inches, yeah, go for it. If you have less, excuse me, than 12 inches, I'd say it's probably not worth it. And you, you might want to consider uh, an, another option. But if you have more than 12 inches, you can definitely go ahead and fill that with cabinetry and, and it, it'd be useful. Again, it's high, it's out of the way, but if that's okay and it's for stuff that's just for later use and doesn't matter, then and you don't mind using um, a stool or something to get up there to, to, to get it, then definitely go ahead and do that. Awesome. I hope, I hope that helps because, um, you know, obviously raising your ceiling by nine inches was a huge undertaking. And I love a high ceiling and I love installing cabinets, um, you know, as high as they can go. Even if it's just for extra storage, I think it can be useful. Um, but again, just because it's there doesn't mean it's the most, you know, just because the space is there doesn't mean it's the most usable space. And uh, actually probably 12, she says, um, Actually, probably 12, they are moldings we bought to match the cabinets. So 12 inches would be, I think 12 inches is doable. You can find cabinets for that, that would fit that. And uh, they're most likely going to be custom, which I am assuming that's what you're going with. And if that's the case, you can definitely, um, you can definitely do it. No fake plants up there. No twinkle lights. No. No, no fake plants and no twinkle lights. I wholeheartedly agree. All or nothing. James says design for function. And I totally agree with that. Completely agree design for function. But there was a comment up here I want to see. No corner cabinets. This uh, Saturday, I'm releasing a video, how to 10 times the functionality of your corner. And it's something that I haven't shared about before on the channel. And yeah, you want to check it out. No corner cabinets. Ugh, I don't like those corner cabinets. All right, those are my old those are my old solutions to my cathedral ceiling. Yeah, sticking all that stuff up there. That's cool. If, if you're into that, that's cool. If you want to put things up there, it's not for me. So again, if you like that, that's cool. I'm 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 not against it. I'm against it for me, but I'm not against it for you if that's what you want to do. Um, put that on a shirt. No corner cabinets. That's a good one. Uh, so yeah. Again, back to the 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 up above. I I've put cabinets up above, right to the ceiling. Like I said, as long as you have twelve inches, I think you can do it um, to be rewarding. If you are redoing the whole kitchen, then that's your real opportunity. But if you're just trying to fill in the space, um, you know it can be it can be hit or miss. So you'll have to to consider that. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up, everyone. I really I really appreciate you guys um, guys and girls watching from all over the world. Really appreciate it to those in the United States. Again, happy Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, be careful out there in Black Friday sales, though I guess that's all over the world now. And uh, so, you know, getting those Christmas deals, but, um, you know, have a, have, a safe, have a safe weekend, have a safe holiday. Uh, really appreciate again, everyone coming on and saying hi. And uh, great, put that on a shirt. No corner cabinets. I'm thinking about it. I think uh, function over fashion. That sounds like a good, a good uh, T-shirt. No corner cabinets. Something to do with corner cabinets um, would be a great shirt. And uh, I don't know something, something for a mug maybe. Uh, yeah. So it, it, let me know. Would you guys buy a T-shirt that says function over fashion? I think that's a really good one. Function over fashion. All right. Really appreciate it, everyone. Okay, if you're watching the replay till this point, wow. <laughs> uh, 
um, you must be driving or just listening to it because, uh, you know, we're just chatting at this point. And I, and I hope that for all of you who are watching, uh, you find some value over this. And thanks so much for joining me. I wish only thing wish that we could do was do this so that we could all kind of chat, um, not just in the chat room. That would be even cooler. So, you know, never know. Maybe someday we'll have a, a mastermind group of, of kitchen design uh, extraordinaire um, people like us. So. Yeah, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. There's this channel is dedicated to just people who want to learn kitchen design, and including myself, because I want to learn more about it too, even though I've been in it for, for such a long time. And um, and and uh, so for, for, you, for those of you who watch and hopefully you get something out of the channel, I do appreciate it. So happy Thanksgiving again, everyone. I'm going to say goodbye for sure this time, and uh, we'll catch you on the next live stream next Wednesday, same time. And um, we'll um, we'll see you then video coming up Saturday, which is again, 10 X your corner cabinet. Uh, I think it's really cool. It's only a short one. And, uh, what else? If you haven't checked out my conversation with Michael from kitchen cider, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, it's, it was a really good conversation. We had a great time. We had a great chat and I highly recommend just throwing headphones on. And, and if you're, um, if you're doing something and you don't, you can't watch it, just listen to it. It's a really, really fun conversation about the different terminologies we use in Europe, in other parts of the world, and North America when it comes to kitchens. So thanks, everybody. Uh, have a great weekend. Bye.